Hello guys, my name is Panda, welcome back to the channel. We are on a journey to review the entire Caleb and Sophia series. In case you're new around here, Become Jehovah's Friend is a series produced by Watchtower designed to better indoctrinate young children. The episodes range from innocent messages for kids to blatant homophobic propaganda. Last time we reviewed the first episode, Obey Jehovah, where Caleb is forced to throw away his magic toy in the garbage because Jehovah hates magic toys apparently. After that, Watchtower released a couple episodes which are frankly not that bad. They focus on basic life lessons like saying thank you, being generous, cleaning your room, and visiting the headquarters at New York. At least the animation got much much better since the debut. But now we skip over to episode 15, where we see clear indications of Watchtower turning up the cultiness level. In today's episode, we're gonna learn about another thing that Jehovah apparently hates. Kids acting like kids? It's gonna be a doozy. And before we start, you know what to do with every XJW video. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps these videos to go out to more people. Without further ado, Let's begin. So we'll listen together to our first subheading, Spiritual Restoration, Why It Matters. Let's have the reading of paragraph 9. Consider the historical perspective. Christians back in the first century enjoyed many spiritual blessings. Jesus and the apostles foretold that true worship would be corrupted and lost. So kids, what did you learn at meeting tonight? No sleeping at the meeting. And no playing at the meeting. Good. Why should we pay attention at the meetings? Imagine if Noah didn't pay attention when Jehovah explained how to build the ark. What happened, Dad? You are right. He paid attention, and it saved his life. Paying attention at the meetings can help save your life. At Genesis 6.22, we read, And Noah did according to all that God had commanded him. He did just so. Well, that escalated very quickly. Let's break this down. First, we start off in the Kingdom Hall during a weekday night. These kids probably had a very long day at school. Uh, you know, being a Jehovah's Witness kid at school can be quite exhausting after all. I'm sure if you were to ask a child, how would you like to spend your evening? They would answer with something like, Oh, I want to go play at the park! Or, I want to watch some Netflix! <laughs> Is that how kids talk? <laughs> no kid would seriously want to be at a boring church meeting after school. We also get a snippet of the talk going on while Caleb plays with his toy car. Spiritual restoration, why it matters. Let's have the reading of paragraph 9. The writers were very deliberate in choosing one of the most boring topics possible, the spiritual restoration of God's people. This topic involves using a lot of dates and mathematics in order to arrive to 1919 as the date Jesus chose the faithful and discreet slave to lead his people on the earth. Does it sound confusing to you? Just imagine how boring it must be for children. <laughs> no wonder Sophia was falling asleep. She, she doesn't care about what's being said here. It's irrelevant to her life and the information is not engaging. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to talk about meetings for a bit. Sometimes as former members, we can forget how boring these midweek meetings actually are. If you, dear viewer, have never been to a meeting with Jehovah's Witnesses, let me briefly explain to you what they involve so you can get an idea <laughs> of why Sophia was falling asleep. Each meeting has a theme centered around two or three Bible chapters. This week, for example, is based on 1 Kings 15 and 16. The first part involves reading of a Bible story. And this week, the story is a gigantic bloodbath, which is 
completely inappropriate for children in the first place. Right after that, everyone watches 15 minutes worth of videos and presentations, showing you how you can perform your ministry more effectively, or in other words, how to indoctrinate strangers into your cult in a more efficient manner. To me, this is by far the most boring part of the meeting because it's extremely repetitive and the advice giving is very elementary and it's not gonna win over any converts. So you're just watching these videos week after week and your abilities in the ministry don't improve at all. The last part of the meeting involves 15 minutes of miscellaneous talks or announcements and 30 minutes of book study. Families are expected to prepare with the book study beforehand, so Caleb and Sophia are probably sick of this information by now. The weekend meetings are not very different, with a 30 minute Bible talk and then a 1 hour watchtower study. This equals 4 hours of meetings each week, without counting the time it takes you to prepare for them. Now repeat this week after week, year after year, and we can really grasp how boring these meetings are for kids like Caleb. Watchtower makes very little effort to provide content that is engaging to children and when they do, like in this video series, it's only to remind them to continue in the same hamster wheel as their parents. Now look at how terrified Caleb and Sophia look after they get busted. It's like they, they beat someone up or something. I've heard numerous stories throughout the years of children being punished in the kingdom hall by their parents when they don't behave perfectly. Maybe you've heard some too. I mean, I wish I was joking, but again, Jehovah's Witness parents tend to go a bit heavy handed with their punishments. I mean, no wonder they look so terrified. When Jehovah explained how to build the ark. Wait, why is one of Noah's son darker than the rest? <laughs> is he adopted? Or is he supposed to be Ham, the son who is later cursed by Noah and becomes the ancestor of all black people? And why are there three turtles on the ark? Turtles are not considered clean animals, you're only supposed to bring one pair in the box. Clearly Noah did not read the memo. <laughs> also, this is the first time Watchtower uses this cardboard drawing style, and they're gonna use it a lot more in the future, and I don't like it, it looks terrible. <laughs> look at this gator, look at this stupid looking gator, I can't stand it. Damn game over that's kind of dark <laughs> is this punishment for bringing three turtles into the ark a total destruction of humanity <laughs> so the lesson here is clear noah paid attention to god's instructions and he survived the flood thanks to his obedience so if you want to survive armageddon you have to pay attention to god's instructions as presented in the kingdom hall watchtower here is comparing its meetings to listening to the voice of god the fear mongering is real. If you miss our meetings, you risk losing your life at Armageddon. This message is terrible for children. Watchtower creates anxiety in their members by turning something so innocent like playing with a toy car into a life and death situation. Jehovah's Witness children already have a difficult time trying to uphold their parents' religion at school. <laughs> now they can't even feel safe in their own house of worship. Paying attention at the meetings can help save your life. Caleb's dad is essentially threatening him by saying he will perish if he doesn't pay attention. The story of Noah has long been used by Christians to instill fear into their listeners on the importance of listening to God, aka to them, in order to survive the end of the world. Even Jesus himself used the flood story to predict his upcoming apocalypse. The flood story did not happen, it is fictional. Debunking the Noah story was one of the first steps I took to wake up from the Watchtower cult. So if you're curious and want to learn more about why the Noah story doesn't hold up against scrutiny, I put together a playlist for you with some of my favorite videos on the topic. But if you still want to hold on to a literal interpretation of Genesis, could we just at least agree to stop scaring our children with these stories? Because using a story in which God drowns close to every living thing on the planet is not the best way we could teach them. I don't think it's very healthy at all. 
Well, this was a very short Caleb video, guys, but I couldn't skip it over because I think this marks the very beginning where uh, Watchtower really, really pumps up the propaganda with these kid videos. And it's gonna continue. They just keep getting worse and worse and worse. But this is the very beginning. You see a very real threat to children telling them that if they don't pay attention at meetings, their lives are at stake. It's ridiculous. It, it's not healthy at all. So we're not done with this Caleb and Sophia series. We have a lot of episodes to cover, but I appreciate you so much for sticking with me and listening to this commentary. First of all, I want to thank my first Patreon for his support. If you want to support what I do and wish to gain early access to all of my videos, consider joining me on Patreon. For only $1 a month, you can help me keep this channel going. If you would like to leave a one-time donation instead, you can do that through Cash App. All the links are in the description below. Your support goes a long way, you guys. These videos take a while to make, but, but I believe the work is important and Jehovah's Witnesses deserve to know the truth about Watchtower. Thank you so much for everything, guys. We'll see you next time.